Joash. In our last story, we learned about Queen Athaliah. Her foul heart turned the entire nation of Judah corrupt and depressed. She ruled to serve herself and killed her grandchildren in attempts to secure her power. However, she overlooked one grandchild, Joash. The righteous leaders of Judah overthrew Athaliah and placed Joash as king over the land. Now we learn of Joash's time as king. His faith would be reliant on the high priest, Jehoiada. However, would Joash's heart cling to righteousness even in his teacher's absence? Or would the darkness in his heart be too much for him to bear alone? Inspired by the book of 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. This is Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our previous episode, we heard about Athaliah, the daughter of King Ahab and Jezebel, who became the only woman to ever rule over God's people. Her evil heart and hunger for power caused her to carry out a slaughter of all of David's descendants in an attempt to secure her rule. But God's plan to save his people through David could not be stopped, and one child remained. Athaliah's grandson, Joash. When Joash was just seven, the leaders of Judah overthrew Athaliah and installed him as king with Jehoda the high priest as his counsel. Today, we'll hear about Joash's righteous rule under the tutelage of his garden and discovered that the young man stayed faithful to his teaching. Let's listen now to today's reading from God's Word. The daughter of the witch queen had fallen. The kingdom of Judah was rid of its villainous empress and now free to worship the Lord under its new king, Joash. The new king was only a boy when he took the throne. At the age of seven, Joash was given a terribly heavy burden to bear. He desired to play, explore, and learn like any other boy his age. However, he was now responsible for the well-being of an entire nation. Joash leaned on the guidance of Jehoiada, the high priest. He was a gentle servant of God, wise and full of God's spirit. He raised Joash in the fear and wisdom of the Lord. Jehoiada gathered other elders, priests, and leaders to come alongside the young king to strengthen and counsel him. As Joash grew older, Jehoiada found two wives for him to settle alliances with other tribes. As Jehoiada grew stronger and more independent, the Lord blessed him with many children and a thriving kingdom. Joash was surveying his kingdom in the coolness of the morning. The sun was just beginning to peer over the hillside, and the new rays of light shone on the temple of God. The temple was brilliantly designed by Solomon. However, years of neglect had broken it down. The temple had lost much of its luster. Joash knew that the temple could not contain God. However, it was a symbol of Israel's relationship with him. He determined in his heart to repair the broken parts of the temple. So Joash set plans in place to restore the place of worship. Enthusiastic about his new project, King Joash summoned all the priests and Levites to his home. They watched as the king laid out his plan. Now all we need is to collect the annual offerings from the people, Joash said with excitement. That will fund the temple repairs. Go quickly to collect from them. However, as Joash was speaking, his enthusiasm was not matched by the men in the room. They left the meeting but delayed in collecting the funds from the people. Joash was anxious that the priests and Levites did not reach out to the people for an offering. He did not understand why they would delay in such a noble project. Disturbed and hurt, he summoned Jehoiada to his home. The old priest sat down. Years had weighed heavily on Jehoiada, but he maintained his bright smile and positive glow. Why haven't the priests and Levites collected the taxes yet? Joash asked while pacing the room. Moses declared this tax in the community of Israel to maintain the tabernacle. It is an act of worship. I would have thought they would be excited to do so. Jehoiada smiled and nodded his head. He stood up and looked out the king's window towards the temple. He then began to tell Joash about the years before he was king. For six years, Queen Athaliah and her men would collect the temple tax and then raid it in the middle of the night to build altars to Baal. The people were oppressed with their own offering. They were choked out by their own acts of worship. Jehoiada looked at Joash and put his hands on his shoulders. 
He was still a young king, naive, but with a good heart. You must comfort the people that things have changed, he said. Joash nodded and left the room. He ordered for a large chest to be made and placed outside the temple gate. The chest was massive, immovable, and could be seen by all. He then explained that the chest would be a symbol of transparency. No one would take the money in secret or in the shadows. When money would be taken to repair the temple, all would be able to witness it. So the proclamation was sent throughout all of Judah and Jerusalem. People happily answered the call and brought their temple tax to the chest of the temple. The elders, priests, and Levites were pleased to partner with Joash, since he proved to be a leader of light, not of darkness. He would not hide in the shadows as his grandmother. Masons, metal workers, and carpenters were all hired to restore the temple. The beaten-up exterior of the temple began to be smoothed of its rough surface. The rotting beams were replaced with sturdy wood. The eroding metal was refurbished and polished. As the temple began to be cleaned, so did the hearts of the people. The temple was a symbol of their restored relationship to God after years of darkness. After the work was done, there was still money left over. The money was then used to make instruments for worship and sacrifice. All these things Joash did under the loving influence of Jehoiada the priest. However, time is the great thief. It takes even the best of men. After 130 years of faithfully guiding, loving, and serving the people of Judah, Jehoiada passed to be with his God. He was buried among the kings in the city of David, for Jehoiada was considered a king in his own right. Without him, Joash would have been lost. The trumpets sounded throughout the entire city of Jerusalem. The sun began its descent and the sky was painted a deep red. The whole nation mourned as Jehoiada was buried into the ground. Joash sulked in the corner of his palace. He sat in silence, mourning over the death of his teacher, friend, and father. There was a dormant darkness in his heart that had been kept down by Jehoiada's kindness. He felt it creeping in slowly. He felt anger. He felt pride. The king had never been without the counsel of Jehoiada. Seeing this void as an opportunity, a few of Judah's elders came to him and bowed. They implored of the king to take their advice. They painted themselves as Jehoiada's replacements. They took advantage of Joash's vulnerable and malleable mind. Together they conspired to abandon the temple of God. They erected monuments and poles to the pagan god, Asherah. The depraved idol worship once eradicated had resurfaced, and the people of Judah suffered as a result. Selfishness replaced generosity. Lewdness replaced kindness. Anger replaced hope. All began to crumble. The Lord rumbled with divine anger against Joash and his leaders. He watched as all the progress established by Jehoiada blew away like sand in a storm. The Lord sent a messenger to Joash to counsel him back to holiness. To do this, he sent Jehoiada's son, Zechariah. Zechariah stood firm against Joash and his corrupt elders. He warned them of what would happen if they continued to muddy their minds with idolatry. Why do you stray from the Lord? he asked. Were you not prospering when under his guidance? Were you not loved and successful while worshipping him? Was Judah not better off? Zechariah's words were true, but fell on deaf ears. He saw Joash's eyes. They were full of hurt and pain. They were the eyes of a man who had given in to the corruption in his own heart. Zechariah sighed. He knew what was about to happen. However, the Lord gave him boldness to say one final thing. If you abandon the Lord, surely you will feel the consequences. With those words, Zechariah was struck on the jaw by the king's guard. He fell to the floor. Immediately, he felt a flurry of kicks on his ribs and stomach. Zechariah moaned in pain as he rose to his feet. He looked at Joash again. Resolute evil beamed from Joash's eyes. Stone him, the king said with a cold tone. Zechariah was dragged out into the courtyard. He was tied to a beam, facing an angry mob of Asherah worshippers. He watched their hands caress the stones that would be thrown at him. 
This was how the king repaid Jehoiada, by killing his son. Zechariah sighed and lifted his eyes to heaven. May you see what they are doing, Lord. May you deal with them as you please. And with those final words, Zechariah felt the onslaught of stones crush his bones and face. Moments later, the bloodied corpse of the prophet was hanging from the beam. His lifeless and mangled body was an image of Judah's collective heart. Springtime came and the nation of Judah was vulnerable. The Aramean army marched in with a small army to plunder the outside towns. They invaded with force and killed every leader that rode out against them. Although their army was small, they were able to take large portions of land. The armies of Judah were uninspired and ill-prepared under their selfish king. Joash rode against the Arameans. He flew in with his horse and sword, expecting to save his nation from evil. However, he was delivered a harsh blow and brutally wounded. Before they could kill him, King Joash was taken back to Jerusalem to heal. Joash slept in his bed. He coughed and winced at his fresh wound. It was a moonless night, and now shadows were cast in Joash's room. Leaders that were loyal to God had crept in the middle of the night and killed the king in his sleep. Thus ended the forty-year reign of Joash. His life was a true tragedy. All the good he accomplished in his life was blotted out by a few years of corruption. Joash serves as an example that past good does not outweigh present failure, to be known and remembered as a true leader, one must cling to God in all seasons of life. As we begin today's reading, Judah has a new king, the young boy Joash. At just seven, he was too young to bear the burden of leadership on his own. So Jehoiada, who had cared for him while he hid from his wicked grandmother, Athaliah served as the boy's teacher and counselor until he came of age. Jehoiada was an honorable man who sought God and served with godly wisdom. He instructed Joash in God's ways from an early age until the young king came of age. It's a reminder of us today that young people need godly leadership and spiritual mentors in their lives, someone whose example can provide wise counsel. This, of course, begins with parents and pastors and others who have the responsibility to teach the young. Because Jehoiada led the young king and taught him to fear the Lord, God blessed the reign of Joash as he matured. When Joash saw the temple in disrepair, he was moved to restore God's house. So he ordered the priest to take up the taxes and offerings from the people to fund the restoration of the temple. It was an act of worship, recognizing that God's house was assigned to the people of God's presence, and it was also a sign to God that his people's hearts were turned to him. The king was sure that the people would be eager to give their offerings to the Lord to accomplish this. But after years of Athaliah's rule and her dishonest dealings with money, the people were reluctant to contribute. They needed to learn to trust their leaders, both the king and the priest. It is almost impossible for a leader to inspire others and lead them when there is a lack of trust. So Joash had Jehoiada construct a chest with a hole in the top, and whenever money was removed from the chest, there was an open and transparent accounting of the funds. The people then gave freely, and the temple was restored. This was not only a physical act of restoration and cleansing, but a symbolic act that demonstrated the changed hearts of God's people and their generosity. After years of faithful service, Jehoiada left his earthly life to be with his heavenly father. He served God and the king of Judah with honor, integrity, and wisdom. Joash had been given a strong example from this godly man. Sadly, what followed Jehoiada's death is an example of how quickly darkness can take over our hearts when we lose focus. In 2 Chronicles 24, 17 and 18, we read this. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to the king. Then the king listened to them and abandoned the house of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherim and the idols. How sad that despite years under his wise mentor, Joash failed to remember the Lord. This serves as a vivid reminder of us today that though we are secure in our salvation through Christ, it is possible to slip into sinful behavior and live as though we are not honoring God. 
when we fail to keep our eyes on the Lord and lean on His Spirit to enable us, when we begin listening to the wisdom of this world or to those who represent the world, darkness like a lion is waiting to devour us. God was angry with the king and sent a message through Zechariah, the son of Joash's mentor, Jehoda. Because he had abandoned God, God would turn away from him. There was still time for repentance. If Joash had heard these words and turned from his ways, history would remember him differently. Instead, he closed his ears and his heart to God, and he had Zechariah the prophet stoned to death. The king's heart has now turned to darkness, and Judah was with him. The nation was attacked by the Arameans, and Joash suffered a devastating wound. He made it home only to be killed by a God-fearing man who desired to see Judah return to the Lord. And so ended the tragic life of a king who began so well but ended so poorly. May his life and his tragic death serve as a lesson to us today. Dear God, thank you for your word always. Thank you for the truth of it, even when it is hard truth. Lord, we pledge that we will be faithful to you. We're asking that your spirit would fill us and use us all the days of our lives that you would guide us and guard us and protect us and provide everything that we need to live in the fear of the Lord always. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer and Bible study a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love, share it with a friend, Pass it on because this podcast can make a huge difference in people's lives. I'm hearing wonderful stories of the impact of God's Word as a result of listening to Bible in a Year. And if you want more biblical resources, resources from God's Word that will enable you and assist you in your walk with God, then be sure to visit jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.